Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the Hauser Next Center here in Fort Myers, Florida. The funny thing about this video is I actually have to go to the washroom right now, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually do this whole video while having to go to the washroom. But basically, people don't realize that you could have something like, for instance, you have urinary incontinence, somebody has to pee all the time, they feel like they have prostate issues, or somebody might have another organ involved like the uterus, right? Think of all the gals who have menstrual problems, PMS, having a hard time carrying a baby to term, polycystic ovarian syndrome, like there's all these things and you go to doctors, right? You go to doctors because, you know, you have a bladder problem, you have a bladder problem, or you have a uterus problem, or you have a prostate problem, or you have a ovary problem. Well, the doctor, especially a medical doctor, isn't thinking, well, maybe there's a structural cause. So I'm gonna probably open up a lot of eyes here because if you think about it, all the organs of the body have a connective tissue support. They have a connective tissue support. And you probably didn't realize sometimes the support is directly onto a bone. So for instance, the bladder, as you'll see, the bladder, the uterus, like it has direct connections to bones. And what if those bones are moving too much? Say somebody is a loose jointed gal, right? Loose jointed gal and she's 25 or she's 18 and she's having trouble holding her urine or she has urinary frequency or she feels like she has to go to the bathroom all the time, right? I'm not saying don't go to the urologist because oftentimes that's the first place to go. But if the uro urologist says, I don't see anything wrong and, the pers and, they, and they diagnose the person with anxiety, well, I would just say, why don't you look at a structural cause? Like, is there pelvic pain? Is there some clicking, grinding, popping when the person's moving? Is the person a cheerleader or they're in gymnastics? Like they're really flexible. Well, maybe it's this hyper flexibility, this pelvic instability possibly that's causing the symptoms. So in general, the kidneys and the bladder, their job is what? The kidneys filter out the bad stuff in the blood, right? It's a filter. And then urea and different things that we have to remove from the blood, it goes into the bladder and we call that urine. So the bladder is mostly a, a tube or a container of urine and then it expels the urine. So when the bladder fills up a certain amount, that's when a person has a sensation like they have to go to the bathroom. So imagine if somebody is always getting that, like for instance, they, they have a sensation of they have to go urinate but there's not really a lot of urine to eliminate, right? That's not normal. Like, why is the bladder feeling tension? I'm just saying it could be that the person has ligamentous pelvic instability, ligamentous sacroiliac instability, ligamentous pubic symphysis instability, and that instability puts tension on the bladder or the uterus and then symptoms symptoms occur. So this just shows, this is kind of cool. Like you have the bladder here. So there's ligamentous support of the bladder onto the pubis, onto the sacrum. And if that connective tissue support of the bladder or the uterus or the prostate isn't, isn't there, then there's going to be extra movement or extra tension onto the ovary. So the extra tension could cause what? Ovarian cysts or polycystic ovarian syndrome. Or in the uterus, could it not cause, if the uterus is moving too much and the uterus 
has blood in it, right, has blood in it, maybe the person could have breakthrough bleeding or they could have menorrhagia or they have painful men menses or they're bleeding excessively or they're having a difficult time having, getting pregnant or holding a pregnancy. All these things could be because of pelvic instability. Now, I put this in here because basically the micturation center or the relay center for urination is actually in the brainstem. So anything that affects the brainstem could also affect the bladder too. So in the medulla is the micturation center. And when somebody has upper cervical instability, so somebody came to me and they had excessive urination or the feeling like they have to urinate all the time and they went to the urologist and it's not an infection, there's nothing structural in the bladder that the urologist found, but they had clicking, popping, grinding in the upper neck, then I would think, well, maybe there's increased pressure on the micturition center because there's a cerebral spinal fluid block or a blocked jugular vein inhibiting fluid flow out of this region. So the fluid builds up and then it irritates the micturition center and then the person has to pee all the time. These are some of the common symptoms or symptoms that could occur with pelvic floor dysfunction. Women, especially more than guys, get diagnosed, well, we got pelvic floor dysfunction. What's the cause? Well, they tell the person it's anxiety. Yeah, if you had all these symptoms and nobody could figure out the cause, wouldn't you have a lot of anxiety too? Like normally anxiety isn't the cause. There has to be some cause. So if you have clicking, popping, grinding in the neck or in the back, and you're hyperflexible, or you have tenderness in your pubic symphysis or tenderness in your back, or always need adjusting, or you feel like when you're walking, one side's longer than the other, it's likely you have some kind of instability in the pelvic region, and some prolotherapy in that region could possibly stabilize the person enough where these symptoms start to go away. Right, so look at this. You have the bladder here, you have the rectum here. Oh, we haven't even talked about that. People have trouble with bowels, right? If somebody's having a hard time uh, holding their stool, like they have to run to the bathroom right away, and you know they might even have accidents. Well, the rectum too, the connective tissue support of the bladder and the rectum, it goes on the pelvic ring. So see how there's ligaments that attach the bladder to the pubic symphysis, and even the prostate has ligamentous support on the pelvic rim or the pubis. So here you have the pubovesicular ligament and the puboprostatic ligament. You have the lateral ligament of the rectum, right? And, it, and it's attached to the bone. So imagine somebody who has pelvic instability and the rectum is, you know, has all kinds of weird forces on it because this bone is moving too much, right? Could that give the person a painful anus, painful bowels, loose bowels? If there's laxity in these ligaments or there's pubic ligament stretching, degeneration injury, right? And that's often you can find it because one pubic bone is higher than the other or lower, right? So when it's not aligned, you might feel like there's something wrong with your pelvis. It just doesn't feel right. You might be walking and it just feels uneven. So all these are signs that there's ligamentous pelvic instability. So if the bones upon which the rectum the uterus, the bladder, or the prostate is moving too much, you could get what? Chronic prostatitis, right? Your prostate continually is inflamed and nobody can figure out the cause. Well, it could just be, you just need some prolotherapy in the lower back, sacroiliac joint, the pubic symphysis, and it might resolve. So there's a structural etiology of chronic cystitis, right? 
your bladder is always inflamed. They might even go in there and it's red, right? It's the bladder is all inflamed and nobody can figure out the cause. Well, do you think the bladder would get inflamed if every time you're walking, it's getting all kinds of tension on it that it's not supposed to? What's going to happen to the uterus, right? The uterus is filling up with blood on the second half of the menstrual cycle and it's not ready for menstruation, but it's getting all these weird tensions on it, would you think you might have breakthrough bleeding or maybe have problems carrying a pregnancy? To stabilize it, what happens? The pelvic muscles tense up. So if you're somebody who just, you feel pressure in the pelvic muscles, you've been diagnosed with pelvic floor dysfunction, it's likely that you have ligamentous pelvic instability as the cause. And then what happens is these organs don't function quite right. You might do relaxation techniques and this and that, and it's helpful, but it's like, no, what's causing it? Like, why isn't it completely going away? Well, you could have injury to any of these ligaments, any of these ligaments, sacroiliac ligaments, pubic symphysis, sacrotuberous ligaments. So you might say, well, how do I know I got ligament injury? Well, do you have pain in those regions? Do you have clicking in those regions? Do you have clicking in this region? Do you have you know, pelvic pain, right? And prolotherapy is injections that stimulate the ligaments to tighten, thicken. It helps resolve the instability. Typically, prolotherapy injections are given every four to six weeks. On average, four or five visits of prolotherapy are needed. So in our office, we do what's called dynamic digital radiography, where we would move the person and we we get fluoroscopic images of what's happening to the movement of the bones as the person moves. And sometimes you need that to diagnose the instability. The other thing we'll do is measure how wide the joints are. We can measure the width of the sacroiliac joint. We can measure the width of the pubic symphysis with x-ray or the pubic symphysis. You can also measure it with ultrasound. Normally the pubic symphysis is around three millimeters and often we'll see the pubis instead of being two and a half millimeters, it might be five millimeters. And the more children a woman's had, often the greater the joint space width is because having children causes the ligaments to get looser and looser and looser. And that's why often you can get symptoms after childbirth. But I'm here to say the prognosis normally is very good. You can tighten the pubic symphysis joint. You can tighten the lower back joints, the lumbosacral joints, the sacroiliac joints with prolotherapy. So normally the prognosis is very, very good. And then, you know, to try to figure out, well, is the neck involved? If somebody has clicking, popping, grinding in the neck, uh, again, that can affect the micturition center or the urinary center in the brain stem. So these are all the symptoms that could occur from ligamentous joint instability in the neck, tachycardia, fatigue, brain fog, cognitive decline, poor digestion, inability to relax uh, because the vagus nerve might be effective, exercise intolerance, post-exercise or post-activity malaise is a common one. All these things can have a structural cause. So if you have rectal issues, bladder issues, prostate issues, uterus issues, and if nobody can figure out the cause, then it may have a structural etiology. If it does, then the treatment needs to be structural. Obviously, there's physical therapy techniques. There's manual therapy chiropractic care, osteopathic care, and if instability is found, normally we would recommend prolotherapy.